Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. It's Monday, it's September 18th. This will be our chart lesson for today. And this was a really frustrating day. There just wasn't much happening. My chart, um, I just didn't have any really good setups on my chart today. There's one or two. Uh, the rest of them are iffy. And, uh, you know, maybe you had a little better... Uh, some of these signal bars or some of these were a little better for you. If this would have been a better signal bar, I would have liked it. Um, seemed like there was another one in here somewhere, uh, right here on this failed second entry short. Um, even if that would have been a good signal bar, you still don't have room to get out. So you're really stuck on that one. And, uh, if this would have been a better signal bar, maybe a short here, um, you let it break lower and then get a little more room, but that's just so tight right there. It's really hard to trade. Um, there just wasn't a lot going on this morning. You might have considered a long here, but with that being an inside bar, just an up, a down up bar, um, it is a second entry, so you really could argue for that one there. But the fact that we just came off the high of this channel and we're headed to the low. I just, I'm not crazy about it. Somebody else sent me an email asking about it. Um, and, you know, I told him I didn't like it. I didn't think it was a good entry. Yeah, you would have gotten, you would have had to ride this whole thing out for it to work. Otherwise, you would have just got stuck in this. Uh, so, and really, you probably should have adjusted this a little bit afterwards. I originally had it coming down right off of those, but. Uh, you probably should have, could have adjusted it a little bit, like so. It's not fitting real nicely the way I originally drew it. You can see it does fit a lot better right there. Um, so the problem with it like this is there's no break yet uh, with a new low. We did try to go here, um, but we're just going sideways by the time you get that second entry short right there. And really, this is your signal bar because that's just an inside bar. And so it never really breaks lower. So you just don't get a whole lot of opportunity. But I'm going to go through the trades. won't take long. Uh, once we started going up here, I would have looked for this measured move. You measure that first leg, drag it over, and you can see we missed that maybe, maybe a tick, maybe two ticks there. And so that would have been my target. And when it comes right up to the upper side, that's where you figure we're going to go, most likely. I just drew this trend line off the lows, drug it up, and that's we turned down right off of it. So um, that was pretty pretty straightforward to find. Uh, the other one here was when we had this leg down. Once we started the next leg down, you just measure that one. You look for a measure. I mean, we went a little further on that one. This, this was surprising. I really thought we'd push up again and try to make a new high. But we just took off to the downside. And you see we're taking it back now. By the time the market closes, uh, it's only about a quarter to three right now. So um, in the end, this is just a range day. And um, we spent most of the day really from 9 o'clock, maybe a little before 9, until almost one o'clock before you got a, a decent setup so it's just this is frustrating and, and if you're not careful you'll you'll force yourself into a trade and get stuck so uh, you gotta this is, this is difficult trading you got that little temporary channel coming down there as well so uh, and there was a failed second entry long there but you got to go short it's not a very good signal bar but it doesn't matter on a trap that doesn't really look like a good trap because you got to go short right into that uh, support across there, and it does end up pushing on down. But you don't, you know, you don't know that, and uh, so that's a little risky. Um, but it is a trap because most people are probably expecting it to bounce from there, at least to go back up to the upper side of the range when it turns down instantly. So you might consider that one as well. But again, I think you'd be better off just to skip it. But uh, let's talk about the trades, and then I want to share one other thing with you for the day and then we'll wrap it up but notice we had this strong push up during the overnight then we started correcting and we only came back about a little more than 50 percent so if it bounces here there's a good chance we're probably going to make another leg up or at least come back up and test the highs and so notice there's the first break here and that's a failed second entry long so you 
you probably want you, you might take that short again it's the first break of that channel so I'm not crazy about it so I only marked it green um, this may be the one the trader actually asked me about instead of this one they're almost a repeat so then you see what happened on this one uh, of course your signal bar is a little better here on my chart than this one and you would have got trapped on this one so that's the main reason I don't like this one because it's right into the low and it's the first entry and a lot of times you're gonna get burned on that so um, but notice it goes back up and it breaks higher makes a double top and turns it goes right out the other side that's a, an engulfing bar and a lot of times I like those but again it's right into these lows and you just don't have much room and, and really by the time this bar closed uh, you couldn't even get a stop because it just gapped right over and just kept going and by the time it, you could have got in it would have been coming back so I like this for a long just because you got the break in a new low right in there in the 50 60 percent correction and um, you figure here it's probably gonna at least test these highs and if you read it right it may be going all the way up and make a another leg up which turns out to be the case if I'd had a better signal bar this would have maybe closed on the other side of the EMA I would have liked this trade but uh, it's a higher low um, and it bounced off that support area again so it's a double test of this um, so there's some reasons to like that one but I still think because of the signal bar on my chart I'm only willing to give it a green so uh, if you had a nice signal bar there or if you um, well, you're probably not going to close uh, your charts not going to be so much different that you're probably going to close above that 21 EMA there so uh, I would just say if you had a better signal bar you'd probably take that one uh, you could probably make that one blue but at this point I still think it's red and then look how long we're we move, we about make just a little bit more to measure and move and look how far we are away from the EMA um, I like that one just to ride it back uh, you still don't have a break or close outside of this little channel but being that far away um, and that bearish of a bar uh, I like that one especially with it being a perfect measured move on the channel too so um, and you know one thing you can do when even though this was a channel working up at the time we were still kind of going above below above you know the EMA so you can almost trade it like a range type day you really didn't have a whole lot of evidence to this part but you know by nine o'clock it was pretty obvious this, that this had a range type feel even though it might be a two-tiered channel working higher so um, again you got your second entry long here uh, but the fact that we pushed back through the EMA and below the um, or through the midline through the EMA all that I just find that one really risky and uh, again I, you could probably argue for it to be green as I said before I'll give it a green but I'd probably stay clear of that one um, and most likely you would have gotten uh, shaken out of it because it, we went into this range and you don't know this is gonna break higher so um, I just think I just think you're better off to skip that because where price is heading I want to explain this if this two-tier channel is in play and we just came off the high and the fact that we went right through or straight on through the EMA and we went right through the uh, midline uh, as well where are prices likely headed they're probably headed down here and probably what happens you'll get a break before we do head down here and that's exactly what continued I really thought we'd probably bounce here of course it pushes on through and we go lower and we really just get another leg down uh, there's two legs in this first leg and then um, you know it's interesting how hard we sold off here but I think people realized then that we were probably headed to test these lows and it just kind of pushed right on through there but I don't think you want to risk entering short right here and I probably wouldn't risk entering long there either but there's arguments for them either way so I'll make them green um, then of course we finally get a break here and you get two leg you get a little two-legged correction and a nice bearish bar and if you draw that bar right there and drag it up I thought it was just a two-tiered I mean a regular channel there but it turns out there's two tiers when we went right on through you want to get a measured distance on this one an equal measured distance and see what happens but 
uh, yeah, you just drag this on up, um, and it turned down right off of it. Second entry short, nice bearish bar. Um, I like that one. And you don't know that it's going to do this. I just figure we're going to come back down and make a new low, but this thing just takes off. So um, at that point, I would at least measure that move and look for something like that. But you can see we went a good bit further than that. So. Um, but the bottom just falls out of it right here. And of course we go down and we test those lows and we actually push through and get that little failed break lower and then off it goes in the other direction. Um, if you'd had a, if this bar hadn't have been right into the lows here, I might've been interested in this, uh, but you needed it to be a lot smaller than that. So there's no way to enter there. And that got you in the two o'clock hour. So it just, I mean, here's your problem. It really ate up the whole day from right here to I'd say to right here it's just a tight um, congestion and that started about let's just see what time it started that started about you really could say it started on these couple of bars so that started around nine o'clock and we didn't get moving again until almost one o'clock. You might could say we started moving here when we broke lower and came back. So, um, but really from nine to 12, 31 o'clock, I mean, that's all we had. There just wasn't anything happening today. And so if you don't catch one of these early ones or one of these late ones, you probably didn't find much to trade today. So, and another thing you might have considered um, along here, uh, treating this as a failed break lower, but it never broke above that bar, and you got an inside bearish bar, and you can't go long above that. And you wouldn't have been able to enter on this one because it just gaps over the EMA and keeps going and turns down. And if you did enter above that one, you would have got burned But because this is your signal bar. This is your original one. And you might, actually, you could probably argue we're a little ways away from the EM, not a whole lot. We've had at least a measured move down, uh, but there's no close outside this little short-term trend channel coming down through here. So, again, you could probably argue for that one to be green, but uh, I probably wouldn't take it. So it's, you know, you're better off to wait and you get this great short. Of course, you don't know that, but this one sets up and you actually get a decent second entry short when you're looking for a retest of this low anyway. And hope maybe you're thinking it's going to come down and test the low side of the channel again because you got this trend line off these lows right here. And I just drug it up. That's where you turn down. So it fits perfect. And then you just try to, then you find your, once it went on through here, you find your measured move and that's where you look for it to bounce. And that's exactly where it does bounce. And then it heads off. So we didn't really start. We got a little movement early on. We had those two legs up, and then it's just sideways, and then we get a nice little move down. And, of course, after 2 o'clock, we get a nice move back. So this thing's probably going to uh, – actually, well, actually, it looks like we may close up at this point unless we sell off here because we closed uh, right here around 2500 on Friday. So – Right now, we're looking to close up a couple of points. So I'm guessing we'll probably close basically unchanged the way this is looking, the way this is playing out. So, uh, yeah, just kind of a weak, mindless day for the meat of the trading day, which is, you know, the best trading is generally from about 7 o'clock to about lunchtime. But today, it was 7 o'clock to about 9, and then we didn't do anything again until almost 1 o'clock. So four hours in there during the heat of the day where there's just nothing going on. So if you had a hard time or you didn't find many trades today, don't worry about it. There wasn't much happening. And it takes a lot of discipline to sit here and not get caught up in some of this stuff. It really does. And But that's what you have to work on and get better at because that that's what really makes the difference between winning and losing at this once you get to the a certain level is just your ability to uh, be patient 
and not get sucked into bad trades and that. And that kind of leads me into, let me find this email just so I can refresh myself with it. But I got an email today. I thought it was interesting. So I figured it'd be time to have this conversation again since this was going to be a quick chart lesson. Uh, normally, I probably wouldn't share an email like this, but uh, I think it's probably pertinent to some of the others. So I'm going to share it, but let me find it. I'll be right back. Okay. The gist of... Uh, this email is, his subject line is, I'm going to give you some honest feedback. And then basically the gist of it is, uh, I'm going to read this part. I'm, I'm going to just read a few pieces of this. But it uh, says, I'm not complaining just to complain. I'm not asking for a refund. I honestly think you are a terrific natural trader. Maybe you even have a genius for trading but you are not doing a good job in presenting a clear method that new users can use. What I want is for you to please step back and look at what you do, then identify your top five entry techniques. Well, as soon as I read that sentence, um, and this is key, so make sure you get this. I'm going to read that again. What I want is for you to please step back and look at what you do, then identify your top five entry techniques. Well, that's the key to this whole thing. Why, why he's probably struggling is that we are not pattern traders. I, I say that a lot, but maybe I don't say it often enough. Uh, you know, we look for second entries. That's second entries during pullbacks to the EMA and the trend line during a trend is probably our greatest, uh, probably our, our most profitable and easiest setup we look for. But you can't just trade second entries or you'll lose because second entries are all over this chart. So what people, some people tend to miss is that we are not pattern traders. There are not setups that I can send you and say, this is what you trade because that setup may be good in one instance and not good in the other. And that's confusing for people because what people are used to is somebody selling them a setup. And trust me, there are all kind of people out there that will sell you exactly what this gentleman's asking for, top five entry techniques, but you'll never make a dime with them. And the reason being is that if you can't read the chart, if you don't understand when this, when a second entry is a good setup like this one versus the second entry right in here, then you can't pick and choose. You So you, otherwise we could just write an algorithm that says take every second entry. It'd be that simple but the problem is is you have to be able to read the chart and you have to understand the context of what's going on just like right here there's a nice second entry long as well right here but at this point prices just came off the high of the the trend channel so we're expecting them to go down here and that's where they end up going it took them a little while and they had to finagle it around but eventually it went lower like we expected like you sh or like you should expect if you understand how to read the chart. Prices go from one from support to resistance. So if you find a channel when prices come off the resistance, then it's going to move back to the support. It might find support at the midline, it, but most likely it's probably going to go to the to the trend line. And right here it just pushed right through the midline. So where is it likely headed back to the trend line? And even then it pushed on lower. Uh, but that's where you would expect prices to go. So if you just blindly take this second entry right here, uh, in the end, you would have this one would have worked, but you would have had to write all that out, and most likely you wouldn't have. But it could have went straight on down. That's what I was thinking it would do, because you're looking for it to come back to this trend line. So make sure you understand that you can't just pick and I can't just give you a few patterns and you trade them. You've got to learn to read the chart, and it's not easy. It takes a long time. You can't read a, a manual or a book and read a few articles off a website and expect to be able to do this. So you won't hear that from most people because most people want to sell you five top entry techniques as he's requesting here. And they'll tell you, yeah, they work. And they'll sell it to you and you'll just lose money. You might get it to work once or twice occasionally, but in the long run, you will not make money. You will lose. And most people won't tell you that. So I'm hoping this gentleman's watching the video today and that this is making sense to him. But just make sure you understand that, that um, we're not pattern traders. We are price action traders. And it's totally different. 
There, there aren't price action patterns that you just can randomly trade. It just doesn't work like that. And anybody's making money, even if they say they're trading something different, they've learned to read the chart if they're consistently profitable. They understand what prices are doing, where they're probably headed. I mean, if you know prices are headed lower, as long as you're getting short, you're probably going to make money. If you know where, how the pattern's set up and what we're looking for, it makes it even easier. But if you, uh, but if you at least know prices are going down here, you can get short, even if you're not really good at picking out where to get short. If you got short here, you could have made money. But if you were buying anywhere down through here, you were losing. So the idea is to how do you know that prices are going lower here? Because you understand what prices are doing. They go, there's a channel here, and from this high off this upper side of the channel, prices are going to come back to this side of the channel. Now, occasionally you'll get a surprise like this, but once we broke through, you're looking for a possible long, but when you saw this trap right here, and it fit perfectly with a possible trend line, you had to go short there. Because this in the big picture, this is a range day. We're, we're above the EMA, we're below it. We're above it, we're below it. We're above it, we're below it. Above it, and so that's telling you can trade it both ways. Just the fact that we're going back and forth above and below, that's a range. Even if you got a channel working up, there still has range. The bigger picture looks more rangy, and so you can still trade it both ways. So, you know, but the main thing I want to get across here was just to make sure people understand that there aren't two or three top entry techniques that I can point out to you that are going to work consistently where you can make money. The key is learning to read the chart and then figuring out where to enter and that's where the patterns come in as to when to enter but it doesn't tell you where to enter so make sure you understand that the entry techniques are are uh, just when to enter but you got to be able to read the chart to know where to enter so I hope that's clear um, so make sure you understand that this takes a long time you're not going to pick up a book and, and practice for a week or two or even a couple of months and learn how to do this. Very few people are that good at it. it took me a couple of years. It takes some people longer than that. Some pe There's another part to this that, you know, I want to make sure you understand too. Um, you, you also have to have the skill set for this. And I'm not saying this gentleman doesn't have it because I don't know. And I'm not saying that none of you have it that might be struggling. There's a lot of people that struggle and are about to give up and then suddenly it clicks. And and I love hearing from those people. They'll send me something and say, hey, I was just about to give up. I thought this was all phony. And then suddenly the light clicks, something went off, and suddenly it, it, it makes total sense to me. And that's really, you know, you'll hear me say that a lot. A lot of what I say won't make sense to you now, but when it clicks, You'll say, oh, now I know what Mac meant when he said that it wouldn't make sense until you get it. And it really won't. It won't make sense until you get it. But you got to have faith and you got to stay with it. And if you do, eventually, you you know, if you have the skill set for it, you'll get it. But just one other little short piece here and then I'm going to wrap it up. But, uh, you know, you do have to have a skill set for this. And some people just do not have it. Just like I'd love to be a professional football player. I can go read books and I can go out and, you know, if I want to be a professional receiver, I can go out and run, you know, I can run routes every day and have somebody throw the ball to me and practice catching and diving and running my routes. And I can read all I can about it, but it don't mean I could go out there and be a professional football player tomorrow because I'm not fast enough. I'm probably not coordinated. I'm, I'm not, I don't have the skill set for what it takes. I probably couldn't take the pain I'd receive for trying to do it especially at my age now. So um, just like I don't have the skill set for that, some of you may not have the skill set for trading. You got to be able to control your emotions. You got to be able to, your mind has got to be stronger than than uh, your emotions, than your desires, the whole bit. It's, it's, I, I like to, a lot of times I'll liken it to, um, 
trying to lose weight or most of us here have probably tried to lose weight or maybe you've been a smoker and tried to quit smoking uh, it takes a really strong intestinal fortitude when you get hungry to not eat and it's difficult to diet and lose weight some people can't do it no matter how hard they try while some people can lose weight on a drop of a hat because it's easy for that they have that willpower and it's the same thing with trading you got to have that willpower that intestinal fortitude to say I can't enter here because it's not doing what I'm expecting it to do or on the other hand this is setting up exactly like Mac taught me now all I got to do is have the courage to pull the trigger and and that's what will happen you'll sit there and you'll watch trade after trade go and you can't pull the trigger and then you'll finally say okay next time I'm gonna pull the trigger and then you pull the trigger and that's the wrong one and you lose and I bet you every one of you can say yeah, I've done that done that plenty of times I did it I know I went through the same thing that all all of y'all go through when I first started this it's a trial and error and it takes a long time and so if you have one of our price action manuals don't think you can read through it once or twice and pick up everything in there. There's so many little odds and ends that may seem trivial on a read through that after you've been doing this a while, you pick it up and you read it and you say, oh man, how did, I, how did I miss that? I can't believe I never remembered that or missed that. You have to use that manual like a study guide and you have to study it over and over and over, read through it over and over and over because I promise you, if you read it 10 times, I bet you you'll pick up 10 different things each time from reading it 10 different times. And um, so continue to read it because there's little bits and pieces that won't make, because you may have to pick up one piece before the next piece makes sense. And it may need to pick up these two pieces before this little piece makes sense. So don't think you can read that manual and get on a chart. And uh, I mean, this same guy went on to tell me he kind of, chewed me out saying I'm glad I didn't have any money to invest or I would have lost it all well how many times if it says it right in the manual how many times have I said it don't risk a dime of your money till you've proven you can do it on the simulator people just glance over that and they think they're going to be different and they think they're uh, they're special and that they're going to be able to trade and make money when I, I you know I put that in there for a reason I tell you that often on here for a reason you're going up against professionals it's just like, how many of you think you could pick up a baseball to bat tomorrow and step in the batter's box and get a hit against a professional pitcher in a game? Most of us would probably whiff out, wouldn't, wouldn't even foul a ball off. It's the same thing. When you step in this here with live trading against professional traders, you got to know what you're doing. You're not going to make money if you don't. And so you're just going to give your money away. You're going to be what I call a donator. Most of you that follow me for a while, you know what donators are. You don't want to be a donator. Don't donate your money to the professional traders. Make sure if you can't do this on a simulator, you can't do it live. So I always tell people, start with a five or $10,000 SIM account and, and you'll know if you did it by the rules or not, but follow the rules and uh, don't be cheating no doubling down or you know all this kind of stuff and just follow the rules and when you can double or triple a five or ten thousand dollar sim account you're probably ready you've proven you can make money so you're probably ready to try it live you'll still have that you'll still have another step you got to get through a mental piece but at least you'll know you can do it and that's what happens a lot of people they just say oh I don't know if I believe this works or not but I'm gonna try it and they go trading live and it doesn't work and they say, oh, this don't work I'm sure some of you probably said that to you some of you that have probably having some success now have said that to yourself before if you hadn't with my with with price action you did it with something else you, you know there's people that will go out here and they buy all these different top five entry techniques that this gentleman's looking for and they'll go buy them from all these different people and none of them work and I'll tell you, none of them are going to work because you can't trade like that. None of those entry techniques are going to work if you can't read this chart. That's the bottom line. So I'm going to get off my soapbox, but I just felt like uh, I hope that gentleman watches the videos based on some of the stuff he's saying here. I don't know if he watches them every day or not. Um, but um, I think his biggest issue is he has a 
misunderstanding of what he needs to do here. And so that's that's what led me to want to share this. It's not to argue with him or to push back against him or anything. I've been there. I know it's frustrating when you can't put two and two together and you can't make any money at this. It's frustrating. I've been there. That's why. That's how I got to sharing what I have here because I wanted people to have something better than what I had. And, uh, and again, in the end, this is not for everybody. Not everybody has a skill set. So if you've, if you've given it your hard time and effort, look deep within yourself and say, hey, I've really given this a fair shot and I just can't do it. And maybe move on and find something you are good at. But if you, you know, if you've never given it a fair shake, don't, don't be surprised that it's not working for you. If you've not, if you don't, what you have to do is you have to get on the simulator and trade every day. And that's just how, that's just the start. You need to trade as many hours. If you can trade eight hours a day, get on the simulator and trade eight hours a day. Don't worry if you're right or wrong. Try to trade properly. Try to do the right things. And just don't worry about wins and losses. Just take the trades. And then at the end of the day, sit down and go over every trade and study it. The ones you got right, figure out, you know, look at what you did properly and try to reproduce that. The ones you got wrong, if you if a trade fails, you read something wrong. You got something wrong. You were wrong at what you were thinking. Figure out what you misread, what you got wrong, and learn from it. That's the key to this whole thing. And I tell people that all the time, and they just don't get that. They think they can read a book and watch a few videos, and then they're going to be successful. Well, this is not that easy. Trust me. So anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox. That's 30 minutes worth. That's more than I intended. But I think that's important, and I probably hadn't had that conversation lately, so it just spurred me to want to have it. So um anyway i'm gonna wrap it up we'll be back again to do it tomorrow this is mac with priceactiontradingsystem.com and we'll see you next time